Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 PSN review. Today I'm going to take a look at The Last Guy, which if you've never played it before, it's basically a survival horror game set around Google Earth, kinda. Um, anyway, at the start you basically get to start and how to play, so I'll go on to start because I'm going to explain how to play. From here you go onto the mission select screen where while I'm just on here very quickly it tells you what the high score is if you've beaten it, how many of the four VIPs you've collected because there's four on each level, it also tells you if you haven't beaten it how many you have to rescue and within what time limit and it says what your ranking is out of the three stars. There's uh, 15 missions overall with an extra few to unlock basically by getting all the VIPs and getting all three star rankings. So there we go then. The uh, place is actually, the cities and all in the game are actually pretty cool because you play all over the place. You start in San Francisco, you head over to Newcastle, which is just up the road from us. You head over to Washington DC at some point as well. That, uh, as I say, Washington DC, not Washington that again is up the road from us. And you go over to London, just places like that, so it's pretty damn cool. So anyway, this is what you get at the start of a mission. It's basically the map showing where all the biggest sectors of people are. And it also explains what the things on the right are, because it shows what power-ups you can collect. Basically, the orange ones are energy, they just fill your stamina up a bit. The red ones fill your stamina up a bit and give you a bit of it. The purple ones take you straight back to the landing zone. The green ones stop the zombies moving for a bit, and the blue ones make you invisible to the zombies for a little bit. So there we go then. The whole point is though, you have to run around saving these people and then taking them to the escape zone. So as you can see here, I've got a few people, and if I take them to the escape zone, they're going straight away. You can zoom in and out, as you might have seen, but I will still warn people with bad eyesight, simply because I've got bad eyesight myself, that sometimes it can be a real, well, real pain just trying to see, and you have to sit right up close to the telly. It's a shame that you can't zoom in a bit more. But basically, by collecting the people, you get some special upgrades. Every time you hit a certain checkpoint of people, things can happen. You'll gain some stamina, so it's the type of thing if you think, well, I've got 500 people here, do I want to take them back before they get killed, or should I just keep going to get more stamina? There's also certain barriers in the middle of the road that actually require a certain amount of people to break. So it could be 300 people or 1,000 people. So again, it's one of them things where if you want to try and get the VIPs and that, you need to keep a long line of people. This can be a bad thing because when you like when the zombies are chasing after you, where they hit initially, they pretty much kill everyone there, and then everyone who's in front of you, like in front of where the zombie hits, stays with you. Everyone who's behind runs into the nearest hiding places, so you have to go and find them again. To get the people out, you just simply walk past the doors and things like that and they'll come out. And also when you've got a long line of people, if you find a hold up and manage to make a circle of people, everyone who's in that area that you've just circled will immediately come out. So that can help you out by being really quick as well. You can run by holding the triangle button, but that basically uses your stamina in the bottom left corner. And if you've ever played Pikmin, basically what the right analog done the C stick, you can hold the circle button and that speeds everyone up and groups them together. So if you're standing still, you can group them into a nice big bunch there and hide in the corner. But again, that uses your stamina up. Top left corner, you've got your timer and you've also got uh, the coloured bars, which basically say danger limits and things like that. When, when an enemy's right next to you, it'll go mental through the roof. You've also got how many's in your current line, how many you've currently got rescued in the escape zone. So you basically want to be looking at that all the time. Yeah, usually you pretty much have to rescue a thousand people, but it can be more, it can be less, and you have a certain time limit to do it, as I say. So it's just one of them things. You've got quite a lot to do there with the 15 missions plus a secret, also finding the VIPs. You, it's probably the type of game that you're going to go back to again and again because I must have played the first three missions about 17 times each now just trying to find the VIPs and having fun with it. It's also quite fun uh, trying to avoid, like, find new ways to avoid the enemies because there's the normal standard zombies which they'll just walk around and if they see you then they'll chase after you. There's these little bugs that go around and they can kill people. There's even a giant zombie scorpion which is pretty damn cool. Musically, the game sounds amazing, and it's if you've ever heard the the song Hot Butter Popcorn or something like that, I think Hot Butter was the band, then it'll sound very similar. I'll try and actually wangle me way in uh, getting it into the uh, credit of this video, so if you want to keep listening through that to try and hear, well, see what I mean basically. Well, hear what I mean. So I'm going to shut up though, just so you can hear this in the first place.
so there we go then, that was a bit of the music, and as you might have also noticed, you can bring up that, well, night vision thermo scan type thing by just holding the X button, but when you do that, you can't see the enemies, so it's one of them things that you're going to be, keep flicking it on, but you've got to be careful, especially if you know that there's enemies around there. Other than that though, there's pretty much nothing I can really say, although as you might be noticing now, it basically comes up how many people you've rescued, every time you rescue a hundred, a little one comes up, and every time you rescue a thousand, a big one comes up. So it's just one of them like quick markers to help you work out how many you've done. Other than the fact that it does actually tell you in straight numerical form, like 1001. So I don't know why it's there, but it's a little funny thing to be fair. It's something that you can laugh at and just watch the pictures go up. But other than that though, there's pretty much nothing left to say. So if you've enjoyed this review, then please subscribe to my videos. There'll be plenty more on the way. Also, don't forget to check out my channel. And this has been Damon212, signing off.